SMB. Uh, so how to exploit SMB with uh, PSXX. So we'll not be utilizing the Metasploit framework for this. So we'll be, uh, instead of focusing on CVEs pertinent to SMB on Windows, we're going to take a look at what you can typically do within a pen test on an internal network, uh, especially if you know what you're looking for. So uh, just before we begin, I'll give you an introduction to SMB. Uh, so SMB stands for Server Message Block. Uh, it is a network file sharing protocol that is used to facilitate the sharing of files and peripherals. So that's printers and or serial ports uh, between computers on a local network. Fairly simple to understand. So SMB typically utilizes port 445 TCP. Uh, however, originally SMB ran on top of NetBIOS using port 139. You still see NetBIOS around for compatibility reasons with older versions of Windows especially when it comes down to connecting, you know, uh, all of these uh, different versions of Windows, uh, NetBIOS is still there uh, just for that. Uh, Samba is the open source Linux implementation of SMB and uh, essentially allows, you know, Windows systems to access Linux shares and devices and, uh, you know, vice versa. So SMB authentication, this is very important because that's uh, sort of the primary, um, that's the primary objective here. So. Uh, the SMB protocol utilizes two levels of authentication, namely uh, user authentication and share authentication. Their names are self-explanatory. So user authentication, this is where users must provide a username and password in order to authenticate with the SMB server in order to access a share, right? Uh, share authentication, this is where users must provide a password in order to access a restricted share. So we are primarily going to be uh, focused on um, user authentication. But one thing to note is that both of these authentication levels uh, utilize a challenge response authentication system, which works as follows. So we have a client and a server. So we can imagine that we are the client and the target system that running Windows is the server. So an authentication request is sent. Uh, the, um, the server will encrypt a string with the user's hash and um, uh, the you know the the, the system is this uh, so I'll I'll make it simpler. Let's say we're trying to authenticate as a particular user, uh, and uh, you know we send the authentication request. The server responds saying, "Okay, um, could you please encrypt this string with the user's hash?" Right. So you know you, uh, the the client encrypts it uh, and sends it to the server. Uh, if that matches. Um, uh, if, if that matches, then you know authentication is successful because they have the same hash. Uh, if not, uh, you know, uh, if not, then access is denied. So fairly simple there. Uh, my main focus is on PSXX. So PSXX is a lightweight telnet replacement developed by Microsoft uh, that allows you to execute processes on remote Windows systems using any user's credentials, uh, any user credentials on the system. Uh, PSXEC authentication is primarily facilitated via SMB and we can utilize the PSXEC utility to authenticate with the target system legitimately and then run arbitrary commands or launch a remote command prompt or even a meterpreter session even though we'll not be doing that. So it's very similar to RDP uh, with regards to the functionality that it offers you. However, instead of controlling the remote system via a GUI interface, commands are sent via the standard command line interpreter. So um, you might be asking yourself, uh, you know, where I, you might have heard of PSXEC as part of uh, Windows Sys internals, uh, and that's right. Um, there is a Python implementation of PSXEC that was especially designed um, for penetration testers. So when it comes down to SMB exploitation with PSXEC, uh, of course, the most important thing to note is that legitimate credentials are required. So how do we obtain legitimate credentials? Well, uh, the easiest way is through an SMB brute force, right? And uh, when we are uh, when we are performing on uh, an SMB brute force on Windows, we need to be cognizant of uh, the fact that, you know, as you guys have pointed out, if there are any defenses in place, we need to be very cognizant of that. Uh, but the great thing with Windows is we can target uh, very well-known uh, usernames that uh, are, are by default uh, present on Windows, uh, especially you know after a, a standard vanilla install. Now, on in most cases, the administrator account called administrator, not admin, the administrator account is typically disabled. Uh, 
But in certain organizations and enterprises, you might find that some systems have the administrator account enabled explicitly. Uh, primarily, this is done by lazy system administrators who, you know, like would like to have an admin account on that system so that they can, you know, remote into it either through uh, uh, RDP typically, or uh, they also um, might want to utilize WinRM if that's been configured, but we'll explore that when we get there. So first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, identify legitimate credentials and we can limit or narrow down our brute force attack to only include common Windows user accounts like administrator. So after we've obtained a legitimate user account and password, we can use the credentials to authenticate with the Windows target system via PSXEC and then execute arbitrary system commands or obtain a reverse shell. So uh, let's get started. I'm just going to switch to the lab here. Right. Make sure the resolution is set correctly. Okay, we're in the lab environment now. So in this lab environment, we're provided with a GUI interface. So you'll uh, you'll automatically be provided with the target IP address uh, right over here. So now we're dealing with a Windows system. So of course, the first thing we would need to do is you know perform a simple uh, Nmap scan and a bit of enumeration with some Nmap scripts. So uh, let me just make sure you guys can see what's going on in the terminal here. And I will copy. Um, I'll copy this here. So there we go. And we can say nmap, very simple service version detection scan, even though, you know, uh, we can limit it to port 445 because that's what we're interested in. Uh, let's just perform it, uh, you know, the default uh, nmap port range. So let's see what this brings up. And... Uh, there we go. So, you know, the typical ports you would associate with a Windows system, you have 135, Microsoft uh, RPC, uh, you then have NetBIOS and uh, SMB. Uh, in this case, even though we sort of specify that we want to perform service version detection, it didn't print out a banner, which would typically tell us what uh, version and edition of Windows the target is running. Anyway, we can enumerate more information using the Nmap scripting engine. Uh, by saying nmap and uh, again in this case we can specify the script uh, let's try and learn more about the smb protocol and what type of authentication is supported so i'm going to say ask uh, nmap script uh, is equal to and i know this script so that's uh, smb protocols uh, protocols let me make sure i type that in correctly and then you know paste in the target ip there uh, let's see what we get because I'm pretty sure we might have to specify the, uh, you know, the actual uh, service version detection flag. But uh, let me make sure that the port is specified there as well. So let's see what that brings up here. All right, so uh, we can see that uh, the Nmap scan uh, completes relatively quickly. And uh, this particular script will uh, essentially tell us the uh, the supported version of SMB with regards to the protocol version. So, you know, you can see that uh, the dialects supported here are two point, uh, anything really from uh, version two onwards. So, okay, we're dealing with a fairly, I would say fairly modern uh, version of Windows just by looking at this. We don't have SMB version one, which uh, if you're familiar with, um, inherent windows uh, vulnerabilities that affect smb you know that eternal blue for example only works on smb version one so this is pretty much telling me that we're dealing with something later than i would say 2012 windows server 2012 so all right so to perform the brute force as i said uh, we can utilize a tool like hydra or you can utilize uh, the metasploit uh, module i think it's smb login i think it's called that allows you to sort of uh, you know perform a brute force uh, 
but either way with SMB, we will need to specify the protocol if you're using Hydra because that's very important. So uh, we can say Hydra. And uh, in this case, as I said, we ideally want to limit um, our brute force to a particular username just so that it's much more efficient. Uh, so instead of specifying the username list, I can just say uh, username L administrator and uh, the password list in this case um let's see user um user share i know we have the metasploit framework uh, there we are all right so user share metasploit framework and then under that we have data word lists and uh, let's see which one we can use so common usernames common passwords uh let's try let's try unix um passwords here and uh, we then specify the target IP and we then as I said need to specify the uh, the uh, the SMB protocol version on the SMB the version of the SMB uh, protocol so that's SMB2 uh, just so that is clear so let's hit enter there we are so again this lab was not really set up to make things uh, as uh, complicated I'm actually glad that completed quickly so the password for the administrator is Superman. Uh, again, brute force attack will depend on the quality of your word list. If uh, the company or the organization has a password policy in place, then, you know, you, <laughs> if you have an idea as to what that password policy is, you might be able to build a word list based on those specific parameters. So you could specify, um, you know, you could use something like, uh, like Hashcat and, uh, and many other tools uh, to generate a uh, much better word list um, that, uh, th that actually falls in line with, uh, with what you're looking for with regards to passwords. So now that you've identified this, uh, well, you actually saw the RDP uh, service open. So that's one way we can gain access. However, what if we wanted to gain access um, to the target system and obtain a command shell? uh and authenticate legitimately without having to utilize metasploit uh drop a payload uh, which can which will obviously if you're dealing with a modern windows system will be detected in this case this will just be classified under the windows event logs as a uh, successful authentication uh in certain cases if logging has been enabled to a point where it's very uh, has been configured to a point where it's very granular uh, of course, the remote IP will be displayed, but if it's coming from uh, a local network, if you're performing the pen test on the local network, if you somehow gained access to a system, then again, uh, you might be able to uh, you know, evade detection that way. So as I said, there is a Python implementation of PSXEC, uh, which as I said, was part of the Windows Sys internal suite of tools. Uh, so I can say psxec.py, there's the Python script. Um, symbolic uh, link has been created uh, for this particular script. If you use the lab environment, it'll pretty much be the same. So when we use PSXEC, let's just hit enter. I'm sure there's a help menu here. There's tons of options available to you, um, which I'll not go through right now, but you can also authenticate with hashes. This is very useful during um, lateral movement or pivoting where you might have dumped credentials, but you've not been able to crack them. You can still authenticate uh, to a system uh, with those hashes. So um, what I'll do now is uh, let's say psxec.py uh, and uh, it's fairly simple. The syntax, we simply say uh, administrator, that's the username and then specify the password, which was uh, Superman. And uh, we then specify the target IP. So again, fairly simple to, uh, to SSH as one of you actually pointed out. So Give that a couple of seconds and um, I will uh, just wait for this to complete. Uh, let me take a look at some of your questions here. If you have any questions, you can begin posting them now uh, so that I can get to them and we can then move on to exploiting WinRM. All right, there we are. So we get a command, uh, command shell session or a command prompt session on the target system. So, uh, I there we are. That's my mistake. So IP config. There we are. We can actually see we are on that system. So who am I? Uh, 
anti-authority system. That's because we authenticated as the um, as the administrator user. So, as I said, I've also covered this before exclusively with Metasploit. Um, uh, you can also do this uh, with the actual PSXEC uh, Windows binary. If you have Wine on your Linux setup, you can pretty much execute it and it'll work uh, almost natively uh, through the command line. Uh, that's something that you'd like to try. Um, so yeah, that's how to exploit SMB again. This is a technique that is used uh, quite, I, I wouldn't say that much, but uh, it is used quite frequently by penetration testers within internal networks, especially once they've obtained, um, you know, local account credentials. Uh, they'll pretty much try and see if they can authenticate. Uh, and that, of course, will depend on the version of SMB and whether authentication is enabled or disabled. Uh, but again, that I, dig uh, I digress. Uh, so yeah, that's going to conclude this demo. Um, so what we can do now is switch over to the next lab within this particular technique section. And uh, feel free to ask questions. I think we should be okay on time because uh, we still have about three labs to cover, including the fishing lab, uh, which might take longer than expected, but we'll get there. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, so uh, Alexander uh, Luca, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, What's the difference between this and Metasploit? Metasploit drops a payload. Uh, this uh, essentially drops a... Uh, it essentially, to, to test whether the authentication was successful, it will find a writable share and then write a test file to see if that is successful and then completes the authentication uh, with uh, via SMB and then provides you with uh, a command shell session. Um, difference SSH and PSXEC. Uh, let, me, let me just make one thing clear. Uh, PSXEC is a utility that allows you to authenticate to a target system, a Windows target system that has SMB authentication enabled. SSH is a protocol just like SMB. PSXEC is a tool. Yeah, thanks Akshay for clarifying that. Uh, does PSXEC also support certs like SSH? Again, it's entirely based on the authentication um, facilitated by SMB. So SMB can be, you know, can be either made very secure or very insecure. 